Hey everyone, welcome to another medical terminology lesson. In this lesson, we're talking about anatomical terms, and this is actually part two of the anatomical terms lesson series. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about prefixes and suffixes that denote musculoskeletal anatomy and reproductive anatomy. So the musculoskeletal system has a lot of different prefixes to remember, so I'd suggest just taking notes as we go along. So the first one I want to talk to you guys about is arthro, which means joint. So you can think of arthritis, an inflammation of the joint. The next one is condyle, which is just denoting the condyles. The next one is chondro, which means uh, cartilage. So you can think of chondritis, an inflammation of the cartilage. The next one is osteo, which means bone. So you can think of osteopathy, a disease of the bone. The next one is uh, musculo, myo, or myoso, uh, which means muscle. So each of these can be used in different settings. So again, you can think of musculoskeletal, or you can think of myosarcoma, which is a cancer of the muscle. The next one is omo, which means shoulder. So you might not have heard of this one so often. You might hear muscles like the omohyoid, which is associated with the shoulder. The next one is scapulo, which just means scapula or shoulder blade, so that's a pretty easy one to remember. The next one is acromio, which just denotes the acromion of the scapula, which is just a projection on the scapula where uh, some muscles actually attach to. The next one is axillo, which just denotes the axilla, which is just your armpit. So you can think of axillary for this one. The next one is brachio, which means the arm. So you can think of the brachioradialis muscle or the brachialis muscle. These muscles all have to do with the arm. The next one is humeral, which just denotes the humerus. So this one's again pretty easy to remember. So the next one is gleno, which just denotes the glenoid fossa or glenoid cavity. So this is just the actually space in between the humerus and where it attaches to the scapula. So you can think of the glenohumeral fossa. The next one is the olecrano, which just denotes the elbow, and the elbow is actually referred to as the olecranon. The next one is cubito, which also denotes the elbow, and, and this one can also actually denote the forearm as well. So you can think of the anticubital fossa, the anterior area of the elbow so the elbow but on the anterior side of the forearm so moving on now so the cervical uh, just represents the cervical vertebrae again that's very easy to remember the next one is spinal or rachio which means the spine the next one is myelo which means the spinal cord so you can think of some conditions like transverse myelitis, which is an infection of the spinal cord that can lead to certain types of symptoms. So transverse myelitis, myelo, again, spinal cord, myelitis, inflammation of the spinal cord. The next one is spondylo, which is uh, denoting the vertebrae. So you can think of ankylosing spondylitis, um, a condition involving pain in the vertebrae. The next one is sterno or sternum, which is pretty easy to remember again. The next one is clido or claviculo, which denotes the clavicle. So for claviculo or clavicular, you can that's pretty easy to remember, but you might not have heard of the clido. Um, this one, uh, you can think of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, which actually attaches to the sternum and the clavicle as well as to the mastoid process on the skull. The next one is costo. So this one denotes the ribs. So you might have heard of the costal margin or costochondritis, a inflammation of the cartilage of the ribs. The next one is coxo, which denotes the hip. The next one is acetabulo, which denotes the acetabulum. So the acetabulum is actually where the hip joint or the joint of the femur bone actually meets the 
pelvis or the pelvic bone. The next one is ischio, which denotes the ischium, um, which is just one of the three bones that makes up the pelvic bones. The next one is ilio, so the uh, ilio actually denotes the ilium. And again, that's another one of the three pelvic bones. And the next one is pubo, which represents the pubis. So these are the three bones of the pelvis. So the ilium, ischium, and pubis are the three bones. Um, you can think of pubo, um, you can think of maybe pubic area for this one. This is actually right around where the pubis bone is. So the next one is sacro, which denotes the sacrum. So the sacrum is just part of the vertebral column, and it's actually the bone that connects the two ilium bones together. The next one is coxi, coxage, or coxigio, which denotes the coccyx. So again, the coccyx is just um, actually the ending of the vertebral column, and it's the little bony tail-like projection that just projects off of the sacrum. And then the next one is the crur, which denotes the leg. And then finally, the last one is femoral, which denotes the femur. So you can think of the femoral artery. Now moving on to the hand and foot anatomy. The first one is chiro, um, or chiro, which stands for the hand. So in chemistry, you might have heard of chiral molecules. Uh, and chiral molecules have what we call handedness. So actually chiro is uh, uh, denoting the hand. And you might also hear mani, which also denotes the hand as well. The next one is onico, um, or onik, which denotes the nails. So in this case, you might have heard of perinicium, or you might have heard of onychomycosis, a fungal infection of the nail. So all of these denote uh, or relate to the nail. The next one is phalangeo or dactyli or dactylo, which all stand for the phalanges or the digits. So you might have heard of uh, polydactyly, um, having too many fingers or more than average number of fingers. The next one is carp or carpo, which denote the wrist, um, specifically the carpal bones. The next one is the metacarp, um, denotes the metacarpals or the hand bones. Now moving on to the foot. So the foot is actually denoted by the prefix podo, um, or another one is pedi. I don't have it written here, but pedi is also another one. So you can think of for pedi, you can think of pedicure. For podo, you can think of podiatry or podiatrist. These all relate to the foot. The next one is tarse or tarso, which denotes the ankle and more specifically the tarsal bones of the ankle. The next one is metatarse, uh, which denote the metatarsals. These are the foot bones. And the last one is calcaneo, which denotes the calcaneus or the heel bone. So now that we've gone through a lot of the musculoskeletal medical terminology, we'll move on now to reproductive anatomy and beginning with female reproductive anatomy. So the first prefix I want to talk about is salpingo, which denotes the fallopian tubes or the oviducts. So you can think of a salpingogram or a, a BSO, a bilateral salpingo oophorectomy. These all relate to fallopian tubes or the oviducts. So the next one is the ovary or oophory, which denote the ovaries. So again, you can think of an oophorectomy, the rem surgical removal of the ovaries. And again, these all relate to the ovaries. The next one is ovo, ovi, or uo, which denotes the egg or the ovum. So you can think of the oocyte, the egg cell, or um, again, the oviducts. This is the ducts for the egg to travel through. The next one is the episio, which denotes the vulva. The next one is culpo or vagino, which denotes the vagina. The next one is cervico, which denotes the cervix of the uterus. So you can think of um, cervical cancer. The next one is hystero or metrio, which denotes the uterus. So you can think of hysterectomy, the removal of the uterus. You can think of 
endometrium, the inner lining of the uterus, or myometrium, the muscle of the uterus. All of these denote the uterus. And the next one is hymenal, which denotes the hymen. Now moving on to the male reproductive anatomy. The first one is spermo or spermato, which denotes the sperm. Very easy to remember. The next one is orchio or orchido, which denotes the testicles. So you can think of orchitis, an inflammation of the testicles. Or you can think of cryptorchidism, the medical condition where the testes are located in the abdomen. The next one is osteo, which denotes the scrotum. The next one is the epididymo, which denotes the epididymis. So in this case, you can think of epididymitis, which is the inflammation of the epididymis. And the epididymis is just behind the testes and where the sperm is actually stored. The next one is prost, uh, which just denotes the prostate, and very easy to remember. So prostatic, uh, you can think of um, benign prostatic hyperplasia. And the last one is Belino or phalo, which denotes the penis, so you can think of belenitis, uh, inflammation of the penis. Anyways, guys, that was another medical terminology lesson on anatomy. In this lesson, we learned musculoskeletal anatomy and the reproductive anatomy. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And again, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.